Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here this morning with us. And if you are joining us on Zoom, we request that you would just go to the chat box and put in who's worshiping with you today and in your home. Also, if you're joining us on Facebook, just give us a shout out and later on YouTube, just make sure you let us know so we know who is able to come and join us for worship. If you are in need of any other additional support, feel free to reach out to us um, and you can contact the church office at dixboroumc at gmail.com or you can call the, the church office number. Also, all, all of this is, is put in an announcement as you, you should have received this on Friday. Hi Dixboro, me again. Uh, thank you for your continued generosity in supporting the missions and ministries of the church. Uh, things are proceeding reasonably well given the circumstances. Uh, I wanted to remind you that if you wanted to switch to uh, e-giving, you can uh, email the church uh, email account at uh, dixboroumc at gmail.com. Uh, and we can get you that form. Uh, also, if you just prefer to keep sending checks, we're happy to accept those. Um, and uh, yeah, our mission giving is going very well, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Next Sunday, I'm going to be on vacation, but it is a special Sunday because it's Laity Sunday. And Mary Turfey, our lay leader, has put together a very exciting worship service with Brent and Harold bringing the message and many of our other lay people participating. So don't miss out. Join us for our first Dixboro Ghost Hunt Drive. It'll be on Friday, October 30th from 4 o'clock to 6.30. You will stay in your car, drive through, and receive a goodie bag and um, try to find the Dixboro Ghost along the way. So families, bring your kids. Grandparents, bring your grandkids. And let's have a fun night exploring a new way to celebrate Halloween. Here's how you can help. Instead of having cars deliver or hand out these goodie bags, we are going to be collecting items to put into a big bag of goodies. So we're looking to collect coloring, coloring books and um, snacks, candy. Um, Patty Burns has created a wish list on Amazon and I will be sharing that with you in an email. And so if you could go right on there, you can even just select right through Amazon and it will be shipped right to Patty and we'll be um, putting these bags together. There will also be a craft that we're already in the works of, um, in the midst of working on. But that is a great opportunity for you to help out is to by purchasing some of those things and then um, bringing your family to come and telling people, letting them know that we're having this Dixboro Ghost Hunt Drive. On Sunday, November 1st, we will be celebrating All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is a day as we remember the saints who have gone before us, the saints in our lives, the saints that have made a difference and have impacted our lives in some way. We are asking for this year, if you could send in pictures to me at revmaryhakely at gmail.com. I would like to receive those, those um, pictures by um, October 25th, so I can put those into a video that we can display. We're asking for any member of your family or a friend that has passed recently, um, to send those in and just let me know who they are and how you know them um, so we can celebrate with you that we can also sit and remember uh, the ones that have gone on before us. Thank you. I know you have been dying to read during worship, and so I just want to take this opportunity to invite you to sign up. We are looking for scripture readers during the 1030 service online, and so if you would be interested and willing and um, just dying to serve in that capacity during worship, we'd love to have you join us. 
I invite you today as we join together in our uh, Dixboro vision, please join me in saying our vision together. Dixboro Church is an inclusive faith community living and serving through God's love. And now Brian will ring the bell as we start our worship this morning. I invite you to join in singing. Zach is going to lead us in a song, Jesus Thine All Victorious Love. And it is to the tune, actually, of Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Jesus Thine All Victorious Love shed in my heart abroad. Then shall my feet no longer roam, rooted and fixed in. join me in the call to worship. We have a Christian heritage of faith and works to celebrate. Let us remember the gift of our tradition. We stand on the courage and the convictions of the saints and remember the gift of our forebears. Let us praise God for the inheritance we have received and for the example of those that have gone before us. Let us, with them, worship the Lord of the church on earth as in heaven. Thank you. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Sorry, things are being like really quiet. Hopefully they're a little louder on your end than they are on my end. I'm not sure why things are so quiet. Um, but today we have a very special opportunity. And um, actually, we delivered these Bibles yesterday to our third graders. But as I was reading through, we've been, um, you know, in the study, the a disciple's heart. I was reading... Um, and I think it was day one, and it used the scripture from 2 Timothy. And it just reminded me how, um, how we have this opportunity to pass our faith down to our children and to continue to help them rekindle and reflame and revive this and just kind of nurture their spiritual formation and their faith formation in there. So let me read the scripture to you. It's from 2 Timothy 1, verses 5 through 7. It says, I'm reminded of your authentic faith. And just as a precursor, this is from written from Paul to Timothy uh, in there. So I'm reminded of your authentic faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. I'm sure that this faith is also inside you. Because of this, I'm reminded, or I'm reminding you to revive, or another translation says, to rekindle God's gift that is in you through the laying on of my hands. God didn't give us a spirit that is timid, but one that is powerful, loving, and self-controlled. So we believe now as our third graders, this is a big milestone for them that they get to receive their Bibles. And I was just thinking of this as, you know, it's our opportunity as a church, as a faith community to come behind our young ones and say, we love you, we support you, and we want you to continue growing in your uh, faith. 
So yesterday, Pastor Jeannie and I had the opportunity to go to their houses and deliver their Bibles to them. So what you're going to see next is a video of them receiving their Bible. Well, Hank, third grade is a very special year that we think that you are ready to start reading your own Bible. So we have a very special Bible for you to begin that with. I also have something else here and you'll have a little lesson. I'm going to do these like short little video lessons that this is a rainbow bookmarker that you can place in your Bible to help you find the spots that we need to. But I'll have a little video on that to show you what you're going to do. We'll all work together. What do you say? So, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> can you continue to grow in God's love and in your faith? <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, third grade. Yay! Mm -hmm. You get your first Bible to start reading. I think you're old enough for that. Does that sound cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So Ethan, we are so proud of you. And um, I want to give you this Bible so that you continue to grow in your faith and your love of God. Mm -hmm. We also have this, this cool rainbow bookmark for you to use in there. And we'll do a little video with how to use that well. Sound good? Congratulations. All right. <laughs> We're so excited. You're in third grade now and that we think is time for a new Bible, like a brand new one that you can just use yourself. And there's some really cool tips in there and we think you'll have fun reading through it. So Corbin, we want to give you this Bible so that you can continue to grow in your faith as you read the stories and love God more and more each day. What do you say? Um, you're welcome. And then here's another little thing. So this is our rainbow bookmark that I'm going to have a little video about how to use that. Ethan was asking all questions about it in the car. We're going to put it, put it in there so you know where we're like the history is and where the poetry is and where the New Testament starts. So I'll have a little video that I share cool, with you. Huh? Sound good? Yeah. Well, you have fun with that, okay? All right. So yes, it was so fun to give them that. Well, here is, I'm going to do a little teaching moment on where you can find resources on there. I spent this week making my own Bitemoji classroom and had lots of fun doing that. Um, I'm going to try something here and get to my screen. Here's my screen again. Can you all see that? Give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. Uh, awesome. Awesome. All right, so you can see me here, you know, trying to be all fun and cool. And so for my third graders, our lesson isn't up there quite yet, but you'll see over here it says third graders. And when you click on that, take you here, and then you click on it again, and it's going to take a second, but it's gonna take you to a page where you can learn all about your new Bible. You can get to know it better, Right up at the beginning here, I'll put our new lesson about that rainbow bookmark that you received yesterday and how to place that in your Bible. And so it will be really fun to do that. All right, let's see if I can go back to here. Let's go back to this home spot and let me show you some other things that are pretty cool in here. So families, there's a place here that this is our faith connection. That's where I've put all of like the children moments that we've had since the beginning of September, I think. Um, all of our little faith formation tips, those are all located at this tab and they'll take you to the website. There's these family playlists are something that our Michigan Conference Children's Coordinator, she's got a long title, but my one of my really good friends, Reverend Kathy Pittenger, um, has created these playlists. So if you're looking for something about um, like you're struggling with trying to find resources for something that's going on, right? Like you could look up for patients or something along those lines. You could go there and there's some really cool and great, um, good resources there. Fun times. All right, I got to show you this one quick. 
Fun times. Oh, that didn't take me to the right spot that I wanted it to. Oops, I made a mistake on that one. But um, so the fun ones, when you click on, I will fix that fun tab. When you click there, you can find um, myself reading some Halloween books to you because I thought that would be fun. So you can go there, you can check it out and um, go see that first Halloween book there. Another thing, and this was at the bottom of the screen, that homepage, this mindful po mindfulness podcast, um, this Big Life Kids podcast and Like You Mindfulness podcast are both really great um, podcasts. Ethan and Layla love listening to them and they're just fun to um, kind of help give you some great tips and think about how you can control yourself and help others all at the same time, right? So one of the things that the like you says, um, says I began ready to love every morning. And I just really like that reminder that every day we should jump out of bed and be, I'm ready to love and that can help us. Let me go back to this back home. So you'll see over here, parents, I have something for you too. I'm still curating this list of um, resources for parents, but there's some books, there's some podcasts on there, and I hope to get a few more other resources up there this week. So those are some um, kind of neat um, places to go to, and I will email this uh, bit of Moji Classroom to you as well later today, once I get that third graders video finished. And so you guys have a place that you can go, and I thought, Let's make it fun. And there's a little bit of home there, even with our, if you noticed our Jesus loves all the children uh, background there that we did a couple of years ago. So as you continue to grow in your faith, and we hope that we can continue to make it fun and interesting, and that you will continue to grow and love um, God even more each day. So thank you all. Let, a, <clears throat> let us join in worship together with Beth and Garen as they lead us in the song Set a Fire. Mm -hmm. As we come to our <clears throat> time of prayer, I want to encourage us to just set everything aside and, and prepare our hearts. Um, we look at our recent concerns. We have Juanita Bolts back on our prayer list, which is uh, Reverend Mary's grandmother. She fell out of bed and had surgery yesterday. Um, also Kathy Freeman's friend, Andrea and Bill Judson. Karen Judson's niece and great nephew, Wendy and TJ, and for the family of Rochelle Miller, uh, as Reverend Mary's friend and the pastor's wife from Plymouth. So we also um, want to continue to remember those who are 
have been on our prayer list for a while. I want to encourage you to place all of these concerns before you somewhere where you remember to offer a prayer up for them daily. Also, our, our, our friends and family who are in care centers, who are homebound, who are not able to get out. And I encourage you to reach out to someone this week and share a card or something with them as, um, as everything that continues to go on is it's, it's been a, a crazy seven months. And so we just want to uh, not forget about each other. I have, um, one in the chat that, uh, let me call it up here. Prayers for the Sol Solomon family who lost their 16 year old daughter suddenly a few days ago. Um, and then uh, there is an update on Wendy and TJ. They have recovered from, the, from COVID, praise God. They have recovered and have returned to work. Bill Judson is home and doing well. So that's, we can praise God for both of those. We uh, certainly want to continue to pray for those affected by COVID and for everything that is going on, uh, the national disasters, the floods, the fires, the hurricanes, poor uh, Florida and, and the coast down there has gotten whopped a couple of times um, for the protests that continue to uh, be around our country and also certainly for the schools, the administrators, the students, the parents, everybody who is um, trying to do the best for our young people that they can and, and still be um, safe in this time of COVID. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, we come this morning. We thank you for, we thank you for your awesomeness and that you allow us to come and, and worship you and celebrate you and give thanks to you, even in the midst of time of trial and tragedy and, and uncertainty. God, we lift up the concerns that we have mentioned here today. We place them before you as we kneel at your feet. We know that you are already working in ways that we can't even fathom or imagine. And we know that um, you know even before we ask. And so we pray that, that you would intercede for us, that you would uh, do, make, do healing and work in ways that whatever you deem fit. We know, God, that healing doesn't come always the way that we want it to come but it comes, it always comes, maybe the ultimate healing. And so we thank you for your son who came and walked this earth and who also died for each of us. And so we pray the example that he taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we're reading from Malachi, book three, verses one through three. Look, I am sending my messenger who will clear the path before me. Suddenly the Lord whom you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you take delight is coming, says the Lord of heavenly forces. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can withstand his appearance? He is like the refiner's fire or the cleaner's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. They will belong to the Lord, presenting a righteous offering. Now a reading from Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. Lord, you enticed me, and I was taken in. You were too strong for me, and you prevailed. Now I'm laughed at all the time. Everyone mocks me. Every time I open my mouth, I cry out and I say, violence and destruction. 
The Lord's word has brought me nothing but insult and injury, constantly. I thought, I'll forget him. I'll no longer speak in his name. But there's an intense fire in my heart, trapped in my bones. I'm drained trying to contain it. I'm unable to do it. Word of God for the people of God. Praise be God. This morning, we continue the series, A Disciple's Heart by James Harnish. So far, we have looked at uh, a disciple's heart is one that knows where it's headed, knows, loves, and serves God. A disciple's heart is one that walks the way of salvation that begins in Jesus. A disciple's heart is one that says yes to the Holy Spirit, its source of power and direction through the God the Holy Spirit. A disciple's heart is one that belongs to the company of the committed. We are a part of the body of Christ. And today we are looking at a disciple's heart is one that has faith that is on fire with holy love. I invite you to pray with me. God of love and passion, come and pour your fire your passion, and holy love into each one of us this morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit into each of us that we might live for you each moment of our lives. Come by your spirit and, and open your word to us. Let the, the words just inspire and, and ooze and burn on fire within us. And so I pray, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Tom read for us the, the book of Mal from the book of Malachi. He didn't read the whole book, um, but he read from, a, from the book of Malachi. And, and Malachi is not only the last book of the Old Testament, but it is the final prophecy before Jesus. We treat Malachi as if it were a name, yet Malachi actually means my messenger, this is God calling us back to a life of faith, a faith that is on fire with holy love. Have you felt on fire with holy love? A faith that is refined and purified by God. Sam Keen, an American author and professor and philosopher, was best known for his exploration of questions regarding love, life, wonder, and religion. He said that the most common variety of stress is rust out <laughs> rather than burn out. Sometimes, I, you know, I'm not sure which I am, but he wrote, it is a product not of an excess of fire, but of a deficiency of passion. So, so rust out is, is it's, it's not just that we have so much fire, we just keep going and going and going until we burn out, but it is an excess of, it's not an excess of fire, but it is a deficiency of passion. How, how often have we lacked our passion? We could sometimes say the thing, same thing about many churches and, and Christians today, couldn't we? Many suffer from a lack of passion. So the question is, where is there a place for passion in our faith? James Harnish, the, the author of, of A Disciple's Heart, wrote, it's not a lack of good intentions or of honorable attempts to do good things, but a deficiency of passion for taking on the deeper challenges of forming disciples who become a part of God's transformation of the world. So did you hear that? It's, it's not that we do not affirm the creeds, but that we are not energetically engaged in the costly journey toward Christian perfection. If we have passion, if we have excitement, if we are energetic about the things that we love, yet so many times we don't leave the church or, or, or go and as we talk to others, yeah, I go to church. 
yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, we don't want to share those things that we're not passionate about. We're not excited. How do we think we're going to transform the world? It's not that we don't believe in God, but that we seldom expect the God in whom we believe to actually do something in and through our lives that makes a transformative difference in us and in the world. I want to repeat that. We seldom expect God to actually do something in and through us. How many of you feel that way today? I mean, hello. Um, so we don't expect God to, to do, seldom expect God to do something in and through our lives that make a transformative difference in us and in the world. So if we are seldomly expecting God to do something in and through us that, that can that can be transformative in us. And how are we going to expect it to be a transformation in the world? Which of course, our, our mission for, for our church is to be disciples of Christ who transform, who live, live so that we can transform the world. It's not that we don't care enough, but that we're not joyful enough. Uh Oh, we're not joyful enough to actually convince the world that the gospel might be what all of us are most deeply searching for. It's not that we are bad, but that we are far too boring. Wait a minute. Boring? Who are you calling boring, right? I'm not boring. Are you boring? Of course not. We don't think we're boring, but are we boring about our Christianity, our faith. Somehow we become focused on doing great things for God and we've got to do these ginormous um, things that how many people are in your worship? How many people are at your event? How many people blah, 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 blah. But it's really about being passionate about being faithful in the little things. Reverend James Moore, he, he tells when he was in seminary, seminary, he served as a student pastor in Ohio. And he was driving down Main Street of, of the town he, he had just become a, a pastor and it was raining. And he, just ahead of him was a little girl, eight or nine, and she um, lost control of her bike and she fell. She smacked down on the pavement. And as she did, she had this sack of groceries and it spewed all over the street. Moore said he did what anyone would do. He stopped. He helped her. And as he was bandaging up her knee or taking care of her, she, she uh, was, started to cry. And, and he helped her gather up all the groceries. And, and she accepted an offer for him to drive her home. Obviously, this was before stranger danger. As he arrived at her home, her mother was most gracious and appreciative of his efforts. And until that he told her that he was the new minister in town. All of a sudden, her demeanor changed. She became nervous. She almost appeared frightened and began to beg him to please leave, get out of it, get, get away from their house. Her husband was expected at any moment, and he did not like ministers, and he didn't, definitely did not permit them in the house. He had had a bad experience with ministers when, when he was young, and so um, he despised the church. As the girl's mother told Reverend Moore about her husband, he began to kind of look around the house. You know, when you go in someplace, you check out the walls, you see the pictures. And he noticed from some of the pictures on the wall that her husband was a boxer. Not only was he a boxer, he wasn't just a boxer, he was a champion boxer. That's when uh, Reverend Moore decided it might be a good idea to, to leave before the husband gets home. Unfortunately, it was too late. The husband was coming in the front door and uh, nervously the, the wife st stammered out the introduction and as soon as the husband heard that Moore was a minister, he glared at him. And he shouted, get out and don't come back. No one from church is wanted here. No minister is welcome here. Get out right now. Wow, that was pretty strong, huh? So the wife apologized. She felt really badly about the situation. But more, you know, he left. He, he didn't want anything to do with this, <clears throat> this gentleman. And so he thought that that was the end of it. He left. But 
strangely enough, the next Sunday during the first hymn, the man who threw more out of his house slipped into the back of the sanctuary and sat down in the last pew. People who saw him, I mean, can you imagine the, the church? They knew who he was. They knew how he felt and they were shocked and they were looking at him and, you know, we know the church. We could see whispers going around. But the man left then during the last hymn. So nobody was able to say anything to him. And the next Sunday, he came back. At the end of the service, he came forward and asked to join the church. Well, <laughs> what, curiosity got the best of the pastor. And he's like, which sermon actually spoke to you? Was it today's or the week before? What, ha what did he say that touched this man? And the man answered him, I hate to tell you this, but I, it wasn't either of your sermons. It wasn't anything you said. Well, gosh, for a pastor, that's pretty deflating when you stand up here preaching every Sunday. But the, then, then he asked him, well, what was it? And, and the man replied, you were kind to my little girl. That's what got my attention. You were kind to my daughter. You see, we are the hands and the feet of Christ. It's not even what we say most of the time that, that touches people's hearts. It's, it's that we are serving as passionate individuals of a passionate God. A God who wants us to be passionate about being faithful in all things, in the little things. The pa this passion begins with what John Wesley called uh, his heart was strangely warmed, but it's more than a warm heart. <clears throat> being United Methodist is more than a warmed heart. The, the same fire of love that warms the heart ignites a passion within us to demonstrate holy love. So that is what it means to be on fire with holy love, to allow love and grace and forgiveness of God to shine into our world through us. It's not always easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not always um, a fun Thing, but as we allow God to shine in and through us, we can be a people on fire for God. Are you on fire this morning? Zach prayed, Zach played the prelude this morning, shine, Jesus, shine. And and I can't think of, of anything more of what we can do by shining throughout this world, being passionate, being joyful, being thankful for all that God has given to us. I want to ask you to do an exercise with me this morning. And I know we're not all in the sanctuary, and I know um, that you are at home or wherever you may be. But I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want you, the reason I'm asking you to close your eyes is so that there are no distractions. But I want you to reflect on, on these questions that I'm about to ask you. How does belief in a passionate God transform the way you live? If God is really a consuming fire, what will it look like <clears throat> for that fire to burn through you? And finally, to whom is God calling you to show his love and forgiveness today? I invite you to pray with me. Our gracious God, all of us at, at times have felt that fire, that passion, that burning within us that we can't help but go and share all that you have done for us and through us and in us. And yet all of us also at times have been boring 
and or afraid to share our faith or what you are doing within our lives. And so, God, I just pray that you would pour your spirit into us as you did on the day of Pentecost, that they couldn't help but go out and be excited about you and excited about our faith. And God, help us to, to reach out to others in love and in service and in passion and forgiving. Be with us throughout this week and throughout the months to come. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we, as Joyful Noise brings us our closing song, Build Your Kingdom Here.
So go forth this week. Go in love. Set a fire with God and go forth and, and be, in, be in knowledge that God does work in and through us to transform the world. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.